Thank you so much. Um, hi, I'm Dan. I'm a designer. Uh, and I really like to make things. Um, I love to make things that help people. Um, Candy and I uh, spent a lot of time uh, cruising around New Orleans on bicycles back in November of 2010, working on I Wish This Was. And we learned a lot from it. And the, the biggest thing that I took away from working with Candy, who's really become a mentor to me, is to start by listening. And so we had to ask a question. And the, the question we asked ourselves was, what if we could see what people wanted in New Orleans? Everyone, what if we could see? And so we took I Wish This Was and we translated it to I Want Blank in My Neighborhood. And that, that's how we got started. So about three months ago, we turned this on in San Francisco. So I'll read some of the ideas from San Francisco. Um, super highways for bikes. Uh, sorry, public fruit trees. Uh, creative use for the old Bay Bridge before it gets turn, torn down. A bar open past 2 a.m. Cages to store the hipsters on the weekend in San Francisco. So the thing that's important about this idea is that Candy taught me you, you can't be afraid of, of being open. It's really important. You, have, you can't censor it. You've got to let people say what they want to say. Because Neighborland is about letting people inform themselves about what's important in their city and to take action on it. So this is an idea that I think a lot of people who rent here can empathize with. It's that just the affordability for an apartment is a real challenge. So if you support that idea on Neighborland, you just simply click Me Too. And I want becomes we want. And then you can follow that issue. So any data that people want to share or um, listings or whatever actually show up on that idea page. So the question that I always get is, well, so what? Uh, it's great if people can share ideas, but what really, what's next? And I came into this project completely naive. I had. Uh, Really, I'd never been in a city hall. I didn't really know what urban planning or urban design was. Um, I really had never been engaged at all. And uh, through the process, what I, what I learned was people really get fired up about doing stuff. And that there was a lot to learn by doing. So what we started doing in New Orleans was hacking the street. One of the first ideas that we really liked was a night market. Uh, St. Claude is a street similar to, to Mid Market between 5th and 8th, where there's been a lot of talk about things happening there, uh, but there hasn't actually, the people who live in the city hadn't actually seen a lot happen on St. Claude. So on the tool, people supported the idea and started discussing what vendors would be good, when, uh, when might be a good time to do it, how do you get a permit, how do you afford uh, to pay for power? How do you get lighting into a space at night? And along the way, a really important thing happened, which is a local organization um, started to play a role in the generation of the idea and, and bring a lot to the table in terms of knowledge. Um, and so we threw a night market. And I think the total budget was 500 bucks. And it was in an empty lot on St. Claude, parking lot. And 500 people came out, and uh, the local vendors had a really good night. And that was the most important thing that happened, was that the vendors saw that there was a lot more demand for local goods and services in that neighborhood than they realized. And so we call this hacking the street. We prototyped it, and we learned. And so this, the, the great thing about St. Claude is, is that they've continued to do the night market not only that, they recently won an Art Place grant to uh, continue their, their work for a fairly substantial amount of money from something that started with a simple sign uh, in an empty parking lot. Now, I, another thing that I learned from this was we could narrow down questions that people had. So instead of, I want blank in New Orleans, all of a sudden we're asking, I want blank on St. Claude Avenue. 
and that that was uh, something that we learned from doing. Steven Johnson uh, recently talked about this as positive deviance. Or I, sometimes I call it illegal in a good way. <laughs> There's some magic happening on the tool now that we're live in 25 cities. So we're live here in San Francisco and Oakland, also in places like Memphis. This idea was posted. Uh, harvesting weed and grass from blighted lots to compost uh, for a farm. Neighborland lets you post pictures, and I, I had to put this in. This is a before and an after. <laughs> really fantastic. So the way that they're using the tool is to find property owners that will let them harvest the, the grass. Now, we could have never anticipated that. We never could have designed that. We've only learned this by by doing and, and really co-creating with our community. This is from Houston. Um, this was very early on when we launched there. Someone wanted a, a better bike, bike crosswalk. And uh, this is really interesting. Uh, now, now, Dan Rain from the city, he didn't post this. Someone else posted it. That, that Dan had actually seen the post, checked the trail, and added seven seconds of all red time to this crossing so that cyclists get the green before traffic. And it was literally four hours after the idea was posted. And again, this is, we didn't anticipate that people would use the tool in this way. Um, now there are some challenges. A lot of the ideas, you can see the ideas out on the street, a lot of them are really big ideas. And there's not easy solutions to them. And there are people who've been working on solving these problems for years. And that's true in New Orleans as well. And so this idea was getting public transit into the Bywater and 7th Ward. And the 100 people on Neighborland were able to activate about 2,300 folks on a change.org petition to actually petition the transit authority to make the application. Well, it cost $80 million to build a streetcar down to Poland Avenue. And there are a lot of cities that compete for those Tiger Grants all over the U.S. Of course, I didn't know any of that. I learned all of that through the process of trying to make this happen. And a lot of people looked at me and said, well, you failed. You can't make everything happen that people want on Neighborland. And that's true. I can't. Um, and in fact, there are a lot of bad ideas on Neighborland. <laughs> but the thing that was really important about this experience for me was I, I, it made me realize the importance of people. That it wasn't about ideas. It was about these people that came together and kept their foot on the gas and tried to make this happen. And, and what happened was a peer network was created around transportation. And so when another idea came up on the tool, which was, hey, I just want to know when the bus is going to show up, that idea, the community, the same community that had failed and learned, actually responded with, hey, uh, what we need is um, GPS data on the buses. Actually, no, there are already GPS transponders on the buses. What we need is the data to be published so that the, the developers can actually build the apps. And what I realized was the, uh, the community was informing itself and making things happen because I didn't really have anything to do with open data at all. I followed it as a, as a user, but Transport for, no, for NOLA, which is a public uh, transportation advocacy group, they really made it happen. And they were very good at tapping into our network and activating people like Joel, who actually built the app. So you can go to the app store now and actually buy an application and find out when the bus is going to be there. So that's our community in New Orleans, which is a little bit further along than we are in any other city. They're learning by doing. <sighs> Neighborhood networks are a little bit weak. And they can be made strong if we can connect people around the issues that they care about. So with folks on Neighborland that are really into biking, what we did was we allowed them to ask a question, specifically how to make it easier and safer in New Orleans. And we went back to our constraint of 500 bucks. What can we do with 500 bucks? And so the team that worked on it 
they came up with a really simple framework to evaluate all the ideas that came in on the tool and pick one that they could actually take action on with this $500 microgrant, which was to uh, use better signage for the cyclists in the city. And the key moment in the discussion thread is when one of the participants asked, what if? What if we did something like Walk Raleigh? Well, what's Walk, Rock, Walk Raleigh is a really cool uh, campaign from Matt Tomasulu, where he put up these signs in downtown Raleigh to, to help people understand uh, how long it would take to walk from one point to the other. And so the team went out and they looked at uh, bicycle lanes uh, all across the city, and they identified stress points, and they had a great graphic designer on the team who actually designed these really cool signs. I love this one that says, just get off your bike. It's a stressy route. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. That's, uh, this is really wonderful uh, wayfinding. It's very humanist wayfinding. And so Ross, uh, who's from Bike Easy, if you can see here on the left, he actually went out and put up the signs. Now, white, now just like uh, Walk Raleigh, this is a little bit illegal. <laughs> but the idea is to nudge the city towards uh, having b much better signage for bicyclists. It's a great city to ride bikes around. I love this picture of Tippy showing off the sign. And um, one, one story I'll tell real quickly is uh, when she took the signs to be fabricated, the guy liked the project so much that he printed three times the number of signs. So the $500 was actually multiplied. So if we get back to some of these ideas that are live on the site today in San Francisco, I would encourage you to uh, find ideas that you care about and drop some knowledge in the tool. If you're into public fruit trees, you should really check out what Friends of the Urban Forest are doing. They had a meeting on Wednesday to talk about spending money to actually bring fruit trees to the city. This was one that um, I came up with. I wanted to harness the power of all of you in the room, and so we posted a question for TEDx Soma where you can answer that, and we're listening. So I'll finish with um, a couple really simple ideas. Everything in the city has been designed. Everything that you see, the buildings, the street, the sidewalk, the waterfront. And what the city becomes will be designed by everyone in this room and everyone that lives in the city outside of the room. And as we go through that process of inventing the city, I would encourage you to speak up about what you want and to connect with people who care about the issues that you care about. And don't be afraid to get out there and make it happen. Thank you. <laughs>